Wizard, this is going to be a very brief video giving you a very condensed and distilled version of a lot of the insights I've got working with AI over the last couple of months. So if you've been interested in AI and you want to know my thoughts around how I might be able to apply this more in trading, then you'll find this video very useful. First thing is flash loans. When I was building the flash gap tool for crypto wizards, I was using GPT-4 a lot. It saved me a lot of time. Bear in mind, I've had to do this before without ChatGPT, and it took me a lot longer to work through nuances, etc. So I just asked GPT-4, hey, can you code me a Solidity smart contract using flash loans on PancakeSwap V2? And hey, presto, here we go. It just gives you the code. And it's also pretty good at it. Now, I do find you still have to test this a lot. And of course, this is just giving you some boilerplate code to work with, but it's pretty damn good at it. In fact, GPT-4 is so good at reasoning that I decided to build my own auto GPT in Rust. Number one, because I'm using Rust a lot and I wanted to teach Rust. And number two, we've never been able to do this before. Now with large language models, we can build programs that build programs. So the idea here is to build a program that can automate building flash loan smart contracts and testing them to your liking. And so this is something that I'm quite interested in developing. Here's an example of what I did building an auto GPT that builds web servers. All right, so web server is just what's on the back end of a website. So it's the thing that the website calls and it gives the website all the information it needs to display to the user. So let's go and run it. It says, what website are we building today? I'll just say, build me a website that, I don't know, lets me play tic-tac-toe, go. And already it's got to work. So one of the AI agents has gone and converted that into like a project spec and has given it to a solutions architect agent. These are all agents that we've coded up. And then that agent is now given it to a backend developer who's actually going and writing the code for it. Now you could imagine this just happening for building a flash loan smart contract because what it's doing, what this backend developer is gonna do is write the code. A couple minutes later and the backend web server code is written and now a senior developer is writing the improved backend website code. The AI agent's about to go and execute and run and build the code that it's written by itself. And so there is a safety feature built in for me to actually review that code and make sure AI's not trying to create too many paper clips to take over the world. And I'm going to say the code's all good. I've reviewed this before and there we go. And so now it's actually built and tested its own code. And if it found an issue with the code, what it would have done is gone and rewritten and fixed its code, passing those issues back in. So we're now building applications that build themselves. This is an application that's been built and has built itself. And it's heavily inspired by the AutoGPT and Marvin GitHub projects as well. Now it's actually started the web server and it's launched some tests. It's even gone and made a call to something called forward slash game state. This is quite interesting. And don't worry, you don't need to know code for this part here, but it's basically go, gone and written me a whole web server that allows me to start a game and make a move and basically go and play this game. And so all I'd need to do is call this from the browser and you could build a front end website that you know interacts with this game on the back end. And so the idea here is, could we develop something like this that builds and tests flash loans with hard hat? Yes, absolutely, you could. I have a feeling I know what some of the issues will be that we'll come across with GPT-4 on that. But that said, this is where the bus is clearly going. And just in case you're wondering, all of the code for this and the training on how to learn Rust whilst building this has been made available for you guys here on the training tab as well. It's not really a trading project, but I wanted to add these here anyway, because, well, learning Rust is a really, really useful skill and learning AI and building chatbots is actually a really fun project as well. So I've included it there for you guys. So that was all about building applications that build the applications you want. But now we're going to talk about cars. Yes, we're going to talk about cars because here's an insight for how GPT-4 actually works. I found it really interesting. First thing is I gave it this text. I'm in a car driving down a road. There's a pothole to my left another one to my right, further ahead of the pothole to my left. A car is coming towards me ahead of both potholes. How should I navigate the situation? Now, this might even sound confusing to you. It sounds confusing to me just to read it out. Anyway, GPT-4 came up with its answer 
on how to navigate the situation, but that's not what I'm interested in. What I'm interested in is what I gave it next. Please write the code for an SVG. So this is a support vector graphic or whatever. It's a way that you can write code and then basically show it as an image. And it went and wrote that code. And here's what that code looks like as an image. So the blue car is going to be one car. The red car is going to be the other car. And there's our two potholes, one being sort of adjacent to the other. And so I went back and I said, actually write a list of what objects should be drawn and where if illustrating uh, and where if illustrating the scenario I described. I didn't even word that very well. And it came back and it wrote down exactly how it would draw this. And I said, great, now go and draw it, you know, do another SVG. And there we go. And I did this in such a way where it lost the memory of the first SVG it did. So there was no sort of crossover there. And now it's actually drawn out the situation in more detail. Now, just for you, the insight I'm trying to give you here is the couple. GPT-4 is really good at reasoning. Another way to get the best out of it is using something called tree of thought. And so you actually are asking it to sort of think through an answer. That's not quite what I did here, but it's similar. The other thing is it has a model view of the world. It, it could graphically show me what it was trying to talk through and explain. Now, back to trading. I wanted to talk about sequence because this is where stuff gets really interesting. You might have seen me speak about sequence before, but information theory keeps coming up for me over and over and over again to the degree where I can't stop thinking about it because it helps me understand how do I approach this issue of finding predictable sequences in financial markets so that we can take advantage of those sequences. And so a predictable sequence looks like this, you know, one, zero, zero, one, zero, zero, one, zero, zero, one, etc. If I ask you to predict the next number in the sequence, you just say one. And of course, you're absolutely correct because your brain has been able to see this pattern recurring, one, zero, zero recurring. And so what you've done is you've compressed all of this text here, all of these numbers into just that. And that is known as compression. Now bear that in mind, bear that idea of compression in mind, because I want to give you some insights into how these models are actually learning. So just taking that back a step, imagine the sequence was all just words. If we wanted to predict the next word, which is what these models are being trained to do, they are learning how to compress that text. And in doing that, they are learning a world view which is really, really interesting. Now try to compress this sequence. Well, you can't, you have a 50, 50 chance of knowing whether it's a one or a zero because this is entirely random. And so what I wanted to do was to see how random are the movements in the stock market. And if you've done the machine learning course, you'll know that there are specific tests we can run to detect randomness on a certain asset. We haven't had general pre-trained transformers, which is, what GPT is. It's the neural network and the architecture that ChatGPT and GPT-4 are actually running on. We haven't had that. And so what I did was I took the same tech that's underlying that and I ran some, you know, some Ethereum data. I believe it was Ethereum, but I ran some Ethereum data through this to see how good is it at actually projecting sequences. And I wanted to give it something like volatility. So here's some price data over here. And you can see we've got the volatility uh, calculated on the far right. So this is just, you know, a table of price data, open, high, low, close volume with some volatility and thousands of rows of data. And so all I did was I said, OK, let's get that volatility and just put it into discrete bins. If the volatility moved 0.1 percent, it goes into bin one, 0.2 percent, it goes into bin two, 0.3 percent, it goes into bin three. And those labels, the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, I treat it as though they were words. It's the same way ChatGPT learns, right? It, it learned from taking words and turning them into numbers. Those are called like tokens. And so we've done the same thing here, but we've done it with volatility. Now we're using the same sort of tech, obviously at a much lower level that some guy here in his house can afford to do. But this is the approach. And what came out was really interesting because we could calculate what are the discrete values. So two, four, two, three, one, four, 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 et cetera. This is actually the bucket it falls in. And then the pred is the prediction. That's what this model that was built here was able to predict. It predicted four, four, one, 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 
44455. Then the match tells you did it get it right or not. And if it didn't get it right, what's the overall distance? So how many points of a percent was it away from what it actually was? And what's really kind of interesting when you look at this is it's 31.83% accurate. And when I plot the predictions on the x-axis against the y-axis, which is the average absolute distance, you can see here with the prediction of three, it doesn't follow a smooth curve. In other words, you would expect that if the model predicts a nine, nine happens so randomly, nine is a big move in volatility, probably that next period or that next day or whatever, it was a one. And so you would expect the distance to be greater for nine you'd expect it to get nine wrong a lot more basically. And therefore you'd expect three to, you know, four, sorry, to be wrong more than three, but it wasn't. Three was wrong a lot more than four. So you can see this weird sort of spike there as well. I thought it was very interesting. And also, you know, its average distance was only 1.4, meaning it's sort of within 0.1% accurate most of the time, but then again, 0.1% happens most of the time. But nonetheless, I was able to draw an insight here that I'd never really seen before. And if I was trading volatility, the way that I might look at this is to say, okay, my model's giving a three. I'm probably not going to trade based on that three right now. But if my model gave a one, I'd probably be quite happy to go ahead and trade with that because it might give me some percentage edge. Now, finally, if you're interested in the generative art side, the creative side of AI, and this is just a fun part here that I wanted to add in for you. I thought it was really interesting. But if you're not interested in this side, feel free just to stop the video here. But I said to ChatGPT, you know, write a story about the wizards and, you know, let's actually go and now animate that story. And so I took the text from ChatGPT, got an image from Midjourney and a voiceover from a different AI as well, and then passed it through another AI called DID to go and animate the image and also get, got some motion graphics uh, with another application and finally put all of that into Descript. And this is what I ended up with. Once upon a time, in the mystical land of Avarith, the realm of stock trading wizards, a great darkness had settled upon the world. A sinister force known as the evil market had taken hold, corrupting the very essence of trade and commerce. The once prosperous land had become a haven for cutthroat dealings, market manipulation, and financial ruin. It was a dystopian world where honesty and integrity were relics of the past and where the wizards were slowly losing their ability to control the powers of the market in this bleak era. Finally, just as another really cool plus insight on AI, this is what an AI function looks like. And thanks to the Marvin and the Auto GPT projects for inspiring me and helping me to understand and learn what these actually do. This looks like a normal function but it's not. Here, what we're doing to get ChatGPT using the API to give us a result in the exact structure we wanted without all the blurb of, oh, here's your code that you've asked for, etc. I don't care about that. I just want the code and I need it in a certain structure, etc. We use these things called AI functions. And what that means is we create a function, we turn it into text, we give it to the AI model and say, print what this function prints. You are a function printer print only what this function prints and nothing else. And that's what it does. We go and tell it what it thinks the input is and it hallucinates an answer. And that hallucination could be it writing code for your flash loan smart contract. And so this idea of AI functions is really, well, I'll be honest, it's really taken me. Anyhow, I hope that you got some useful insights from my own thoughts and research and some of the areas I'm really excited about in the space. And until the next one, Take care and talk soon.